was captive on a slave boat, rowing through the swamp. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mike of Black Cat Amplification. And uh, today, a lot of you have requested this, especially the people on Reverb. I've had this listing up for a while. I haven't had a chance to do a demo, but here it is. The Marshall JTM 45 clone. And it's built into an old 1950s Westinghouse uh, old tube radio. Um, so I'd like to walk you through all the features of this and kind of show you all what it's about and then we'll get into a demo. So I mentioned that I had built this into, an, into a Westinghouse 1950s tube radio cabinet. When I bought this radio cabinet, it was on eBay, Some uh, there was a seller that was getting rid of it and um, it didn't have any radio guts in it at all. I'd like to buy these things without the radio guts in case there's a vintage radio person that likes to restore them. I won't buy any with any of the guts in them. But this one, I thought this cabinet was so cool and that it would kind of do justice for an amp that's also very vintage and old. So the amp inside is a exact clone to the Marshall Specs early 1960s schematics of the JTM 45. So you can see right here, I kind of put a little Marshall JTM 45 emblem on there so that you could see what the model is right on the front. Um, and I did have to drill some holes here at the bottom. There were a few holes here for the original radio knobs, but um, I wound up adding a bunch of extra features and some knobs. And I wanted all the controls to sort of be on the front. The original JTM 45s also had the inputs on the front, but uh, I've moved all that stuff to the back and it just kind of makes for a nice clean face. And all you really need to do is plug into the back and you're good to go with all the controls on the front. So this face that you see here is a clear plexiglass face that I built custom for this. And the original face, um, matter of fact, I'll show you a clip of it in this, uh, once I'm finished here, of what the original looked like. It was just kind of old and ragged and dirty and you couldn't see the inside very well. So I thought I'm gonna just totally make a brand new face for this. And what I wound up doing was cutting a perfect um, plexiglass face, you could sort of see some reflection in there. Uh, and there's also this vintage speaker, it's basically like speaker cloth, um, vintage style. So it's very sort of fancy looking here and I kind of came up with the design and I wanted to really showcase the guts of the amp and it almost looks like a TV set. Once I got that far, I thought this just, just needs one more thing. So I decided to make these legs for it. Um, this was not part of the original radio kind of reminds me of an old TV set, like an old tube TV set. The legs are totally removable if you don't want them on there. So you can unscrew those very easily. But I thought it definitely added some character. Another thing I added was this handle on top, and this is a nice black leather handle. Um, so this is, you know, for portability, you can carry it around. Um, the thing weighs probably between 30 and 35 pounds, I'd say, um, all together. It's a pretty heavy cabinet. It's not like plywood it's solid wood all the way through there's a couple little dings and some imperfections in it but i think that also adds to the character there's no major defects on it anywhere though it's got some really nice corners definitely sort of that 1950s 60s look um, but this is a 1950s westinghouse cabinet so uh, one other thing is you can see it's lit up inside and i'll kind of show you in here there's my logo for black cat amplification there's also some um tube uh what the tubes are recommended tubes in here 12 ax7s for the preamp they're kt66s for the power tube and those are also labeled in the back and there's a rectifier tube and i left the original westinghouse emblem here i just kind of um, attached it to one of the transformers just so that you could sort of see uh, what this originally was but that's removable as well and inside, if I can get it without the reflection, is the original Westinghouse tube schematic for this radio. So I left that in there as well. I built a custom back, um, and this is sort of out of uh, a material called hardboard, and it's uh, ventilated, so I added these holes to kind of ventilate it inside so it's not completely closed. And it also has some ventilation if you see behind the tubes there, there's a little bit of an opening. And I'll show you the back in a minute. So the features for this, as far as it playability, um, it's exact specs to the Marshall JTM 45. However, I have added some cool bells and whistles to it, and that's what we'll go over next. 
So I turned the light on here so you can see this a little bit better. Um, the normal volume here, you can see this, um, this wood actually did have some radio um, controls here like tuner and volume and things like that. So I've put some new labels over this. Normal volume, um, pull high gain, I'll explain that in a minute, that's not an original feature. It has the high volume, normal volume, treble, middle, bass, presence, and then I've also added a master volume, which the original did not have. And that's a really nice feature to have, especially if you want to crank up the gain and not blow your neighbors out of the water. <laughs> so a uh, <clears throat> couple things. I'll show you the back where the inputs are. But these pull knobs here, so pull for high gain means when you're playing in the normal volume, plugged into the normal volume channels in the back, this is sort of a, uh, you've, some of you may have heard of the one wire mod. It's based off of that mod. And part of the first uh, preamp tube is not used in the normal schematic. So this cascades that and creates a gain cas cascading stage. So it's adding extra gain into the whole circuit. So the type of gain that you get out of this boost is, I would kind of say, sort of comparable to like, 80s hair metal type rock um, but it's a really nice feature it's not part of the original design I thought I could add that in and it kind of just gives you more flexibility with how much gain you want to dial in so when you pull this out right and I'll go over a demo you want to so when you pull this knob out right when you give it a little pull there it's actually bringing both of these channels in together and cascading the gain from both channels so uh, and it's actually got some other things in the circuit that give it a little extra boost. You want to use both knobs here to dial in how much gain you want. Um, so it's uh, some of you may have done things like you can jump the channels, like I've done here on this Fender Basement. I jump the channels here. If I plug into the normal input here, I can actually play through this channel and this channel and get some different tones that way and extra gain that way. Um, it's a very similar thing, but you don't have to actually jump it in the back. You can jump it if you want to, meaning adding a, a little jumper cable to jump the two channels together. But this is a nice feature in that you can jump it just like this and then dial in how much gain you want by using both of these preamp knobs. So this is preamp volumes for the normal and, and the high. Of course, the treble mid and bass is standard. It's the standard tone circuit for the JTM 45. The presence knob was also part of that as well. And this master volume is just like what it says. It'll control, you can set whatever kind of gain you want from your channels you're plugged into, and then use this as sort of your master volume. So you can, it's almost like if you've ever wanted to crank a JTM 45 up to the max to get that grit and sort of distortion out of it, it's gonna blow you away because it's pretty loud amp. I mean, you really gotta crank it up to get that nice classic rock sort of uh, chunkiness to it. But this volume will allow you to play it much lower, even practice volumes in a bedroom, and it, it really adds a lot of flexibility. So I'll move on to the back here. All right, here's the back of the amp. As I mentioned, I made a custom back here. So this is made out of a hardboard material, which was very similar to the same material they used on the back of the old radios. This radio did not come with the back, this cabinet, so I made this custom for it. Made some ventilation holes. Air is, it's plenty ventilated. Air is going to come up through the bottom here and escape. The heat will escape out of the top from the tubes. So starting from this side, of course you've got the, the cord and there's a nice little spot in here. Um, I didn't make the chassis too big. This is all hand drilled chassis um, and that way you can sort of put your uh, cord, your power cord in here as you're traveling with it. Um, so it's a nice little spot so the, you don't have to wrap the cord around the legs or anything. Of course the fuse is right here and this is a 3 amp fuse. You have your mains and your standby and just like Marshall did back in the day, these are, these are Marshall, all Marshall style um, switches and indicator light and so on they actually had your power switch was up for off and down for on <laughs> so um, that's just the way they did it so this is all kept just like the original the indicator light of course is you know just a pilot lamp there's a LED switch so I'm gonna show you this from the front but as you can see if I switch I can actually turn all the LEDs off 
I can switch the blue and the orange on, or just the orange. So I'll show you that once I get around the, to the front of it. Um, so the output selector, this was, I don't believe this was part of the original circuit. It's been a while since I built this, but you can switch it to 4 ohm total load, 8 ohm, or 16 ohm. Um, so that way it'll give you sort of control over if you're using one cabinet or two, and if you're using, say, two 16 ohm cabinets, you want to switch the total load to 8 ohms. So you have an external and a main speaker. Um, I have two 8 ohm cabinets, so I switch it to 4 ohms. And um, your, here's your inputs. And so you have two for the high gain and two for the high treble side, right? So if you wanted to do a jumper from the back, let me grab my jumper cable, you could do something like this where you plug into this one and, excuse me, trying to, do, trying to film at the same time. So you could jumper these two here and plug into the normal and now you're running both of these. But again, you don't have to do that with that one wire mod that the pull switch because once you do that pull switch it'll engage both channels and you can use both of the preamp volumes for that so that's the back side so oh, sorry one other thing i forgot here is uh there's a little speaker type input here and you can see where it says led power on the side um, that's actually for one of the led um, branches it's the blue LEDs because they're actually wired up into the top of the cabinet shining down on the on the chassis the orange LEDs are actually situated right behind the lights or sorry behind the tubes and um, if you want to completely unplug this you can just unplug this little speaker cable and it'll disengage the blue lights from it and it also provides you a way if you need to do work on the chassis you can just unplug that and it's now disconnected from any electronics wired into the cabinet, which is basically the blue LED circuit. Okay, so I have the lights off, but there is some light coming in from the window <clears throat> in the room, but this is the blue LEDs that are on. There's three of them up inside of the cabinet. You're probably not gonna see it. There's one from this angle. Um, there's one shining down there, one in the middle, and one on the other side. So you can have just those on, and you can see the tubes heating up there in the back. And I'm going to try to film and reach behind here to switch. Now the orange LEDs are on. And if I want, I can just put the orange ones on. So the orange are sort of, the idea there was for, you could sort of simulate a brighter glowing tube. Um, it really adds to the kind of the nice warm glow effect of the tubes. And they're situated behind the tubes so that they kind of, show this uh, back backlit type thing on the back board there. So so you could do run either or or, or you could shut them off by unplugging that one cable for the blue and go like this. So this is just blue, blue and orange together, and just orange. All right, time for the demo. So right now I'm plugged into the normal channel and I have everything sort of dialed in at noon. And this master volume is just sort of on like one or two. Plugged into two uh, 4 by 12 Mesa cabinets and the volume is very low right now. And keeping these all on 12, if I sort of turn this master volume down a little bit, I can dial in how much gain and grit I want on the normal volume by, at, by using this control here. and some treble, a little extra presence. Now if I crank this all the way up, you're going to get a lot more gain out of the normal volume. Use the normal volume channel for cleans 
Um, so it's got a great clean sound and kind of just like to cut the highs back just a tiny bit in the presence. And using the neck pickup here, this is um these are active pickups. This is a guitar I use for metal and this is tuned down to B standard. So some of this <laughs> Any classic rock or blues riffs that I play might sound a little lower than they usually would. Uh, this is my main guitar, and it's an Evertune bridge, so it's really tough to tune this thing to change the tuning. I've got some other ones that I could try. But this gives you what I feel like is since Marshall cloned this from a Fender Bassman sort of um, circuit, I feel like this normal channel is the closest to that circuit. So it's almost like having a Fender Bassman, which I do have one and I've cloned one as well. Um, kind of has that really warm, kind of thick Fender sound. Without a lot of bright. The one difference though, um, than the Fender basement is some of those Fender basements had, uh, well, at least in the 70s, they only had two preamp tubes. This one's got the third, so you definitely get more grit out of even this normal volume if you crank that up a little bit. some high gain stuff like the classic rock sound. I think cleans for me for this JTM 45 is bet sound a little better on the on the normal volume channel whereas if I really wanted to rock out I think the high channel just gives you that extra presence and brightness. So this is about halfway on the preamp volume. Again the master volume is still very low. <laughs> punch out of it, cranking the presence up. Now if I give this a real go here and crank it up, it would sound just like you're cranking up the JTM 45 to the max, except that again, it's controlled by the master volume on how much loudness you're going to hear. Thing. And I don't know if this could be useful, maybe in a recording situation, 
Um, but I did add a pull bright here as well. So this bright volume has like a super brightness pull here, which adds an extra capacitor in the circuit. And you really get a lot of extra sort of um, high ends. So this could compensate for speakers that just have a lot of lowness and you're not, you, you might have certain speakers that just don't have that presence push. So depending on what speakers you're using or even your pickups, you might get a little extra brightness out of this. So it goes beyond what the original JTM45 treble volume, treble knob can do for you and just sort of add that extra bite if you really needed it. So again, it's... show you this super high gain boost that I've added. Uh, it's not going to make it anywhere near like what's sitting underneath of it like a Mesa or anything because there's only three preamp tubes but it does add an extra layer of cascading gain to the circuit. So if you crank both of these up you are going to and pull this out you are going to get a little more static because of course it's going to be adding so much more gain into the into this circuit. Once you start playing you're not going to hear that. It's not really static it's just the normal idling buzz because you're adding a lot of grit to this thing. So without it plugged in and on the normal volume almost all the way up, you kind of get that normal grit, right? But you pull this out and you crank up the high volume here as well. say I want to switch between the normal and the high volume channels without having to pull my cable out and plug it in again. So what this allows you to do is if you wanted to play cleaner, you kind of can use your brightness channel and keep this one down or just up just a little bit. I had my bass turned down and my treble's really high. I could say I'm going to turn the high volume down and turn this one up and I get 
this volume here. So there's a lot of different tone options you could do just by pulling that out and playing with the two volumes together. But right now I'm plugged into the normal volume, so if I push that in... for tuning in to this demo i hope this was helpful and uh, again this is up for sale so and when i ship this i'll definitely make sure that everything is packed extra 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 carefully because i know any carrier is just going to throw this thing around no matter how many fragile stickers you put on it and i've had good luck with shipping amps that i've built um, by packing them extremely well so it might cost a few extra bucks uh, for the weight of the extra padding, but um, I will definitely remove the legs because um, then you got you'll have to assemble them if you purchase it. But I'm going to try to mark the bottom to just kind of show you where to put everything so that it's very easy. So that'll just be assembled with the screws. Everything else, I believe, aside from the tubes, which I'll probably pull out and wrap those in bubble wrap so they don't get messed up in transport, um, that'll be something easy you could put back together as well. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please email me or message me on Reverb if you have any questions about this. And I'd like to, if I can, do a louder volume demo. Neighbors are home right now, but uh, this was at a sort of a low volume demo. But you can see how versatile it is with that master volume knob. Thanks for tuning in.